the other day, as I was scrolling through Pinterest, looking up outfits, I couldn't help but wonder, hmm, if each zodiac sign was a fashion aesthetic, what would it be? So I thought it'd be fun to draw all the zodiacs as a different look. And today we're going to be doing all the air signs, which are Aquarius, Libra, and Gemini. I'm also going to explain a little bit about how and why I've made the choices I did so that hopefully you guys can see where I'm coming from. By the way, these are just my opinions of what I think would suit the signs. You might think differently, and that's fine. So the first girl we're doing today is Libra. And there were a couple of things that I wanted to take into consideration when creating her design. Libra is represented by the scales, which symbolizes harmony, balance, and justice. Libra is also ruled by the planet Venus, and Venus was the Roman goddess of beauty and love. I like to think of it as the embodiment of super feminine energy. If you think of things like enjoying fancy dinners, or museums, or luxury accessories, those are the kind of vibes of a zodiac ruled by Venus. So for our Libra, I wanted to pick an aesthetic that would make her look girly, but also very sophisticated and refined. I went back and forth on a handful of different aesthetics that I thought would fit, like ballet core and coquette. I feel like ballet core had that element of elegance and femininity to it because of its association with ballet, but it didn't really fit the story that I eventually came up with for this character. And coquette is very girly, but it was a bit too youthful for the look that I had in mind. I also heavily considered the batty aesthetic for some reason, but in the end, I decided to give our Libra Quiet luxury. Quiet luxury is an aesthetic that's all about looking like a high class, high achieving woman, but in a very understated way. It uses a lot of neutral colors like beiges, blacks, whites. There's also a lot of monochromatic color schemes, usually in a muted or neutral tone. So Libra is associated with pink and blue. So those are the colors that I was working with today. For Libra sketch, I gave her this droopy, kind of drapey top that was inspired by this picture. I gave her a pair of pants that were inspired by these. And of course, I gave her a cute pair of pink high heels. I wanted to give her a luxury purse, so I sketched in this thing that was inspired by a Chanel bag I saw, but this kind of just looks like a knockoff. <laughs> and then I gave her some simple and classic jewelry, a pearl bracelet, necklace, and earrings. And finally, I gave her a very simple tied back hairstyle. Libra is associated with the colors blue and pink, which are typically seen in more cutesy aesthetics. I worried that her color combination might come across as too colorful and bold for an aesthetic like quiet luxury, but in the end, I figured that it probably wasn't that serious. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that I gave this character a backstory, as I often do when designing outfits and characters. So I imagined that this girl is a law student because Libra and the scales and justice and that whole thing. <laughs> I imagine that she's good friends with our Aquarius character, who we'll meet in just a second, and those two volunteer together a lot. I also imagine that this girl likes shopping and going to museums. She probably has a lot of expensive, classy, rich girl hobbies, like goes to the opera, she visits museums a lot, and is always trying to try out fancy restaurants and stuff like that. In the end, I loved her minimalistic yet colorful design, and I think she came out very cute. Next up is Aquarius. And just like with Libra, I wanted to take the lore of this zodiac sign into consideration when picking an aesthetic for her. So Aquarius is symbolized as a being that nourishes the earth by spilling water onto it. This actually represents doing things for the good of humanity, which is why this sign is often associated with humanitarian pursuits, rebellion, and social change. Aquarius is also ruled by the planet Uranus, which, as we know, is the only planet that spins on its side. Because of that, Uranus has always symbolized nonconformity. That's why, in addition to being rebels with the cause, Aquarians are also associated with quirky fashion interests. Also, fun fact, did you know that Aquarius is statistically the most rare zodiac? Overall, Aquarius is one that's not afraid to be unique, to go against the grain, and to fight for the greater good. And with all that rebel energy, I really wanted to pick the perfect aesthetic to match. But I didn't have to look too hard because I already had two in mind that, in my opinion, fit perfectly. At first, I chose punk because punk was an aesthetic that was born from a movement in the 70s to rebel against the social norms of the time. But then I remembered learning about another subgenre of punk that I rarely see or hear anyone talking about, and that aesthetic is called Afropunk. 
Now, Afropunk was created to recognize Black and African American contributions to punk rock music. Currently, it's become a place to celebrate Black culture, fashion, music, and social values. I was so moved and inspired by the outfits I saw while researching this aesthetic. It involves the use of a lot of bold colors and African Ankara patterns. People proudly display their natural hair. There's a lot of makeup that's inspired by African cultural face painting. It was this unique combination of futuristic, punk, and African themes combined with the activism behind the fashion that made me feel really inspired to dress Aquarius in this aesthetic. Aquarius is associated with electric blue, so that's what I mainly used for her. For her skirt, I was inspired by those long maxi skirts with slits in them to show off your legs, so I gave her that. I also gave her a couple leather accessories to reference some of the traditional punk inspiration, mainly a leather vest and some boots, but I played it pretty safe. I could have gone for like some spikes and stuff, but I played it pretty vanilla. I gave her fishnets because I love fishnets. <laughs> I gave her a bunch of silver jewelry and necklaces inspired by some of my Afropunk references. And for her hair, I just gave her a big floofy undercut. The texture I used in her skirt was actually something I AI generated myself, but the texture that I used in her headband comes from a traditional African fabric from Botswana, and it's called Shweshe fabric. Now the main color for Aquarius is blue, but with an aesthetic like this, there aren't really any hard color rules, so you can pretty much use whatever you want. Now, just like Libra, I did come up with a backstory for her. I imagine that this Aquarius is a student attending the same college as our Libra, and she studies sociology and psychology. These two are best friends, and they volunteer every weekend to work with vulnerable and troubled children. They also collect donations on their campus for women's shelters. I imagine that despite Aquarius's passion to aid the greater good, she may not necessarily be all that good at interacting with people. She's more of a big picture visionary, so she may overlook the importance of being emotionally invested in the people that she's trying to work with or support. That's why Libra tags along, to let Aquarius know when it's time to stop being detached and come back to Earth. In the end, I love how our Aquarius came out. She was so fun to work on. I learned a lot with this aesthetic, which is always the most fun part of doing projects like this. But now, this brings us to Gemini. Now, Gemini is symbolized by a pair of twins, which represents duality or dual-naturedness. It also represents adaptability. Gemini is said to be the most adaptable and flexible of all the signs. On one hand, with such a versatile personality, you can only imagine how difficult it was to settle on just one aesthetic. On the other hand, that also kind of means that you can pretty much pick anything and not go wrong, because Gemini definitely seems like the kind of sign that changes up their aesthetic every week just to keep things fresh. They probably get bored of having to stick with just one for too long. For this sign, unlike Libra and Aquarius, I didn't choose its aesthetic based on its lore. I actually picked it based on the vibe that I personally get from Gemini. Now, Gemini is said to be a very lighthearted, energetic sign. You never know what to expect with them, and they're always looking for something new to capture their interest. They're naturally curious, and they don't really take life too seriously, in like the best way. And when I think of Geminis, I get a youthful, almost childlike vibe. So I ended up caught between two different aesthetics, Kidcore and Y2K. I drew sketches for both, and I'll show the Y2K version later, but in the end, I decided to go with Kidcore. Now, Kidcore is an aesthetic that's all about nostalgia and recapturing the joy of your childhood. It's bright, fun, and it's so colorful. Its main color scheme is actually rainbows, and you'll usually see a lot of denim paired with it too, as well as motifs with retro toys like Care Bears. It was a toss-up between Kidcore and Y2K for me because they both revolve around nostalgia, but I think Y2K does it in a much more mature way. Okay, so Gemini is associated with yellow, so that's what I used here. I wanted to give her some bright yellow denim overalls, a pair of yellow Converse's, and a very colorful rainbow jacket. The texture I used here was also AI generated. I just have to say, I do have very, very complicated and very strong feelings about AI art, but I do tend to use it sometimes to create generic patterns for clothing and stuff like that. And for her hair, finally, I gave her some really cute, messy space buns. Now for her backstory, since Gemini is ruled by the planet Mercury, which is associated with communication because of Mercury, the Roman messenger god, I imagined that our girl is a communication student in school. 
I imagine that she probably owns a blog, perhaps a fashion blog. I also considered that she could have a YouTube channel related to things like gossip and public drama. Like one of those tea spilling channels. Or maybe it's not an either or thing. Maybe she does both. Though, she's probably a little inconsistent. But it doesn't matter, because next month she'll get bored of her blog and her channel and go start a new hobby anyway. <laughs> Now, at the last minute, I decided that this Gemini girl would not be complete if I didn't make her a twin. So, of course I did. And, as promised, here is the Y2K version of this outfit that I made for her. You can let me know what you think of this outfit in the comments. Also, if you would like to see me do the other nine zodiacs, let me know, and maybe let me know which element you would want to see next. If you'd like to see other fashion-related videos of mine, you can check out this one next. Hope to see you in the next video, but if not, I will catch you later. Bye-bye!